Hey guys, this is Lucas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create functions in Swift 2.0. And I want to do this because when I started off programming with Swift in Xcode, I had problems figuring out how to actually work with functions. And that's actually some time ago already, but I just want to show you how to actually do that if you don't understand it fully. So what we're going to do now is just create a new project or a new playground. I've just created a playground now because that's easier. And we're going to start off creating our first function ever or just create our function. So let's go and say func, which is a keyword just like bar for variable or lat for constant or any other keyword that you know. And then you can give this a name. So what I want to do now is a physics formula. I really like one of mine, which is the resistance. So the resistance we can say calculate resistance, which is then a name, and then you have to add parentheses, and in here you can actually say what this is gonna do. So this is the really, well, that's the easiest way of actually creating a, uh, a function, but now you can add some things. So in the parentheses you can do so-called parameters to actually do something, which is really useful for many cases. And then you can also do a return thing, like you can return something, let's say like a bool, or you can return an int or a double. In this case, I want to go for a double. And then we want to have two variables in here, or parameters, sorry, parameters. And because we are programmers, and we want to be really, really, well, we want to be lazy. We actually want to use you but our code should be readable. That is why we are going to be using um, tension and current. So now we say tension of type double. So if you add something to this, when you call it, you can call a function. I show you in a few seconds how that works. You have to enter a double. And then we want to have another parameter, which is also a number, and it's current. So there you go, we have that now. We have two numbers that we can't add later, but it still says it doesn't work. That is because, as you can see, missing return of function expected to return double. As I said, you don't have to use parameters, you don't have to return something, but let's just say we want to return something, and then you have to use the keyword return, and we can actually return just a number, five, and that's fine with it, but we want to use our well, our parameters. And there is something really cool in Swift, which is, or which I call um, call names or call parameter names. Like here, you can say u tension and i current. And now you can say return tension divided by current. And if you hand this program to, I don't know, someone in your class for physics and they want to do that really quick, they actually understand it because they know what U and I is, you can say calculate resistance and you see U and I, which is much shorter, and we can now add numbers, 3 and 1, and this is going to tell us, well, it's 3, let's go for a better example, 3 and 2, which is, yeah, you see, it works. But maybe you want to work with wearables to make that much easier in your problem later if you want to, for example, catch data and it's just going to update the wearable and enter that information. So let's say we have a wearable var and this is number one because it can be changed later. And we're going to just say this is now, I don't know, 10 or something, 10. And we have, an, we have another one, number two. And now we can actually call this number one, and we can call this one of number two. And this should work just fine. It doesn't, that is because it's an end. We have to say this is a double, sorry. Now it should work. Yeah, now it works. So you see, now that we have this, it's all fine and it works. But if you want to actually get this result and add it to, well, a variable or a constant, you can do that, of course. Bar result is calculate resistance. And then you can say, for example, print result. And you see, 
yeah, it definitely prints that out. And you actually are done. That is how our below functions actually work and you can do much more complicated things. And of course, if you want to make more functions in a function, that doesn't work. So let's um, actually try it up here. Let's just comment this out. We don't need to do that for now. And let's say we want to create another function, hello. And this does obviously not really work. Well, you should not do that. You can obviously run a function in another function, but you should not create one. That is actually not a good practice to do. And you will see why the more you get into programming. Let's actually get back of this. And a function can actually change its name by the way you use it. So let's say you have a class. Class, hello, or a struct, doesn't matter. And you create a function inside of this. Well, this function is not a function anymore. This thing is now called function, is now method. You may have heard of that method. That's how you call it. So just get used to it. If someone is talking about a method that is a function inside a struct or a class, maybe even some other things that are inside of Swift, because I don't know for other languages, but that's just here now. So you probably get this example now, and I hope if you had not understood it, I hope you get it now. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, leave them below. And we're going to see us in the next video. See ya.